Hello, my name is Orca, and in this video I will talk about the Long Range Frigates. This is my favorite build so far for this uh, ship class. I use it for a stealthy uh, brawler kind of uh, approach for PvP most of the time. Uh, sometimes I use it in PvE depending on uh, which map I'm playing. Uh, if I'm playing against squisher targets, M NPCs, uh, like uh, interceptors, fighters, and so on, it's really, really uh, effective. Uh, in PvP, it's a different story. It's all about a sneaky attack and taking down as many targets as possible before warping uh, uh, out of the danger, z danger zone. So, what makes this build so special is it's kind of meta build because. The name is Long Range Frigate, so the name of this class is a Long Range Frigate, and I'm using it as a short range brawler, which is the total opposite of the intention that this ship was made for. So let's uh, talk about the build a bit more. So this is a Kraken, uh, it's a special project ship's, uh, ship. Um, uh, it's a uh, very good ship for me at least because I got used to the Empire ship tree and um, general gameplay so I'm using most of the time the positron it's the best possible uh, weapon uh, because the long-range frigates al always have six guns and instead of the four guns every other class that interceptors have uh, the only ship class other than destroyers, of course, they have uh, 68 uh, simultaneously firing uh, guns. This ship class has 6, so it has extra damage output than the rest of the ships, the regular ships. So I'm using that, for that uh, specific feature for my advantage. So the pause trunk comes in really handy. So when we're talking about the Positron, uh, you should probably take a look at the damage uh, rather than the DPS. It's right under uh, the DPS, the damage listed. So one shot deals 4,000 damage, uh, well, per shot. So uh, I'm using a couple of pulse dischargers for extra weapon damage. I'm using one accelerated coils for increased projectile speed. Uh, the shield and hull are pretty straightforward. It's just for tanking abilities to survive a uh, battle and something like that. And the CPU is all about the critical uh, chance and critical damage. The reason why I put here a spatial scanner is because I get more critical chance this way then I would go then I would get with double infrared scanners so this is a mid-range build that can be used for uh, fighting interceptors fighters and frigates equally and if you're if you're close enough to a destroyer it, it can be also effective against the destroyer as well you you just need to focus fire on its modules to deal the maximum possible damage so, um, as for the build in general, uh, the, the key elements of the build is projectile speed and the damage output, so the damage per shot. Since you can charge two shots in one shot, you can basically deal double damage uh, combined with the critical. It's uh, kind of a quadra damage, so to say, uh, in one shot. So the best thing about the stealthy approach is you shoot one charge, one charged uh, projectile, and by the time the enemy actually knows your position and everything, he will, he or she will uh, already be dead. So it's really important to not reveal your position unless your EM scattering field is going to uh, end, I guess. So, also you can be uh, seen by by those interceptor modules that can reveal your position. So be aware of that. 
So uh, projectile speed and damage. This is these are two uh, main elements of this build. So tweaking any uh, one of those will result shifting the uh, one versus one ratio in favor of uh, let's say interceptors if you're going for maximum projectile speed or frigates and bigger targets if you're going for sheer damage. So you can go for a ton of damage if you're going against bigger targets. You can go for a really high projectile speed if you're going against interceptors. And um, you can go on all of the classes equally uh, in, with this build. So this build is the mid-ground of those two variations. So if you wanted to go, let's say, maximum damage output on bigger targets, uh, you, you would have to go for the supernova, for extra critical uh, damage and stuff like that. So it will result in a rather huge uh, damage. So we're talking here about almost 5,000 damage uh, per shot. So a charge shot will deal almost 10,000 and with a critical that's like 166% you will deal um, 26, 25,000 EM damage per charge shot. So this is a huge number and if you get close to a, uh, let's say the shore in the 750 meter radius you will deal triple damage so you will almost deal 70,000 EM damage per charge shot on a destroyer. So these are huge numbers and you should always be careful uh, when playing this kind of a uh, build because it's all about being stealthy, not revealing your position, uh, balancing out between um, either uh, fast projectile speed or maximum damage output or something something in between those two so you will always need the EM scattering field and the reverse thruster uh, in general this build is the oldest trick in the book uh, it's viable it was viable since well it was introduced um, so this is nothing new but it can be very effective and one of the best players playing the long range frigates will probably be using the same tactic over and over again because it's effective nobody expects a huge ship going this close especially a long range frigate battling in a close range so it's a um, surprise kind of a stealthy approach on uh, any uh, on any occasion so you can play it with friends or against friends uh, in custom matches just to see how it affects the overall scores damage tactics statistics whatever so let's go to the crew settings real quick so here I have this, uh, the usual critical chance implant um, the resistance implants here uh, the range missile implant, the rotation, this is important as well to have rotation enough to be able to uh, shoot more agile targets close range. So this uh, sixth implant, uh, it can be uh, used in many ways. So if you have enough uh, critical damage, a critical chance you can go for more damage or projectile speed or just uh, critical damage in general so this one is the, one of the most important implants uh, of this build so you can go from each one of the uh, one of the three options here it's all good you just have to figure out uh, if you're going to battle uh, interceptors uh, fighters or frigates uh, that meaning uh, more agile targets, faster targets, or more sluggish targets you can't miss, at least not that easily. 
Uh, the other implants are pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the seven implant is all about the afterburner reduced. Uh, the rest is pretty much about uh, reducing the cooldown time on active modules and stuff like that. Uh, this one is really important because I'm playing Empire Long Range Frigate and uh, I need this implant for extra resistances. This one is also for reducing module recharge. Uh, the fire rate here, this can be change, changed uh, either for the ant or for the RR50. So one of these two is also a viable option uh, depending on which missile slot missile slot uh, stuff you're going for. Uh, since you're going to be a very slow target target and uh, you won't be moving too much, I suggest uh, Gladius 2 because it grants you additional 7% more damage. You don't need energy, you don't need shields, especially when you're playing long range frigates from the Empire side because, well, shields are not very good on their ships. It's all about the hull and damage output, so that's the characteristics of the Empire line of ships. Um, the 13 range of implants, well, you can go for the Raptus 3 or uh, the other two for more damage. I I went for the Ant 2 because I like more damage and assist, assists also count as a uh, trigger for this implant to work. So it's a um, nice implant for extra damage, uh, always welcome. Uh, as for the Gigas 3, uh, it's the only anti-crowd control element I have on this ship, so I'm using this. But you can also use uh, the Albatross 2 or the SRX, depending on your playstyle. Uh, also, it depends on the PvP in general of which enemies you encounter the most, which effects you encounter the most. So, uh, this uh, is supposed to be changed on the fly depending on uh, your well general impression of your latest gameplay. And the 15 is all about the extra damage. So this is pretty much it for the crew settings. Uh, as for the missiles, I go for the mine layer or the torpedo. Sometimes in the doomsdays, but um, in most cases either torpedo or mine layer. Mine layer if I'm going in a mid-range for all of the ship classes uh, combined. So if I miss my target and my target gets uh, all the way uh, on my back and I can't rotate all the way, uh, I just use mine layer to place some mines around me and that's my defensive maneuver. If if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's just uh, a lucky shot, so to say. Uh, the torpedo is nice for sneak attacks for groups of enemies in one place. Uh, just perfect for AOE damage. As for the doomsdays, well, if you want to hit a target, a uh, one specific target, and you don't want to miss it, well, it's probably best to go for the doomsday. So this build in general is best suited for against all of the other ship classes. Uh, you can tweak it for maximum damage output. Uh, you can tweak it for projectile speed depending uh, which ship class you're going to fight against. Uh, it's I would advise to pick either the bigger or the smaller targets and not the mid-range because it's it requires a bit of training, a bit of exercise, practice, whatever. So uh, it's a situational kind of a build that can be uh, useful, but in most cases it won't because general lack of gameplay. So um, I would suggest either one of those two. Um, for the missiles, anything goes. Um, in my next video I will talk more about this build. I will showcase some gameplay and um, 
probably you will see the merits of this build. So until then, see ya.